All right, listener. So tonight we're diving into the world of Unreally Game Nights, and um, you've sent us some intel on episode five. Or is it episode five, maybe? Yeah. And let me tell you, the intrigue is already brewing faster than a 20-ounce microbrew on Mug Club Tuesday. Indeed, and trust me, with this crew, every game night has the potential to be. A legendary saga, especially. Mm -hmm. When you throw in a healthy dose of Machikoro 2 and the siren song of Unruly Kitchen's Tato Dogs. Speaking of legendary sagas, we've got our usual suspects, well, some of them at least. Ben, the game night vigilante, is present and accounted for, but it looks like Eric, our resident inner game night ninja, is mysteriously absent. Almost makes you wonder if those rumors about him needing a break from Ben's vigilant ways might be true. Oh, it wouldn't go that far just yet. But Eric's absence certainly adds another layer of intrigue to tonight's game, mm -hmm. especially given his uh, competitive streak. And he's not the only one missing in action. Dave, the master of attempted money hoarding, is also absent. Maybe he finally achieved that financial stability he's always striving for in Machikoro 2. Or perhaps he's just biding his time, waiting for the perfect moment to rejoin the game. Okay, that's officially two strikes against the coincidence theory. You know what they say. Two missing players and a taco dog craving is a recipe for. Well, something interesting at the very least. But enough about who isn't there. Let's talk about who is. Because game one is already off and running with a Machi Koro 2 showdown. Right, we've got Ben, Mark, Dan, and a newcomer to the mix, Jeff, all vying for victory. And it seems like Mark emerged triumphant. But his win comes with a side of raised eyebrows. Apparently the man was rolling 12s like it was his job. Okay, hold on. Rewind that dice roll. We're talking about Mark here, right? Mr. Yep. Never rolls above a 7 mark. Hi. Either there's been some serious dice-related training montage happening behind the scenes, or things are about to get very interesting. And by interesting, I mean potentially accusation-filled. Well, you know what they say about Machi Koro, too. It's all fun and games until someone starts questioning the yes. integrity of the dice. And given Ben's game night vigilante persona, I wouldn't be surprised if he's already dusting off his detective hat and magnifying glass. Oh, 100%. Ben strikes me as a type who keeps a running tally of statistically improbable dice rolls. But before we can dive into Ben's potential reaction, and let's be honest, we all know a good Ben reaction is prime unruly game night content, <laughs> our alleged dice wielding champion, Mark decides to pull a disappearing act. You know, for someone who just dominated a game of Machi Core 2, Mark seems awfully eager to excuse himself, almost like he knew exactly when to make a strategic exit. And conveniently, this exit coincides with the allure of Unruly Kitchen's legendary taco dogs. Oh. Coincidence. I don't think not. Okay, but can we talk about the genius of this move? Let's be real. If anyone's going to question your suspiciously good luck with the dice... It's a lot harder to do when they're three bites into a delicious, cheesy taco dog. I'm already half convinced this was a calculated distraction tactic, and frankly, I'm impressed. As am I. And Mark's strategic retreat paves the way for game two. With Mark out, presumably on a quest for culinary satisfaction, Matt steps up to the plate. Jeff, Dan, and Matt. This is going to be good. And by good, you mean chaotic, right? Because the intel mentions something about dice rolling on the floor, cards flying through the air, you know, the classic signs of a truly epic game night. Exactly. This is where the energy of unruly game nights truly comes alive. The combination of friendly competition, flowing microbrews, and the thrill of the unknown. It's electric. And amidst all this delightful chaos, Jeff manages to snag a win. But wait, it gets better. Apparently, Jeff's winning streak involved a suspicious number of fives. Are we seeing a pattern here? First Mark and his 12s, now Jeff and his 5s, is Unruly Brewing Co., built on some ancient dice-rolling vortex. I mean, at this point, I'm starting to think those rumors about the brewery being built on an old carnival ground might actually be true. Either that, <laughs> or we've got ourselves a couple of card sharks masquerading as board game enthusiasts. Oh, now that's an interesting thought. What if this whole game night is an elaborate ruse? a carefully orchestrated performance designed to lull unsuspecting players into a false sense of security before they're completely cleaned out. Intriguing indeed. It seems we've stumbled upon more questions than answers, wouldn't you say? You know, for a group that claims to just be enjoying a casual Mug Club Tuesday, they sure know how to keep things interesting. But we'll dig into those questions and more right after this quick message from our sponsor. All right, so let's talk strategy. Or should I say, the fascinating spectrum of it. On display during this particular unruly game night. We've got Mark vanishing into the night like a phantom with a fistful of taco dog vouchers. Then there's Jeff riding the wave of chaos and fives, all the way to victory. It begs the question, is there a method to their madness? Or are we giving way too much credit to a couple of guys 
who might just be on a lucky streak. I mean, isn't that the million dollar question when it comes to game night? Is it calculated strategy, dumb luck, or a potent cocktail of both? But here's the thing about Jeff's win, and maybe this is just me reading way too much into things, but if those five roles were indeed intentional, it suggests a whole different level of gameplay. We know Mark is a force to be reckoned with in Machi Cora too, but Jeff's a newcomer. If he's already mastering the art of subtle manipulation, we might have a future unruly game night champion on our hands. Uh. Though I wouldn't count Ben out just yet. Remember, this is the game night vigilante we're talking about. The man practically has a sixth sense when it comes to sniffing out anything, even remotely off about a dice roll. He's probably already replaying every round in his head, analyzing angles and calculation probabilities as we speak. Oh, absolutely. And you know what pairs perfectly with probabilities and potential accusations of foul play. That's right, more delicious food. And luckily, Unruly Kitchen delivers yet again. Speaking of which, let's circle back to their upcoming event, because Doggone Tuesdays sounds like the perfect blend of good food and good deeds. Absolutely. Starting November 5th, they're partnering with Pound Buddies, so every Tuesday will feature special dog-themed hot dogs, with a portion of the proceeds going to support shelter pups. It's like a win-win for everyone. Delicious food, good company, and a chance to give back to furry friends in need. What's not to love? Honestly, between the Mug Club perks, the epic game nights, and now a chance to support a worthy cause. Unruly Brewing Co. is quickly becoming the ultimate hangout spot. But let's get back to the game night at hand because we've got some missing players to contend with. Seriously, Eric, Dave, April, where were you guys? I know, it feels strange dissecting a game night without them. It's like that missing piece of the puzzle. That leaves you wondering what could have been. Imagine the possibilities if Eric had been there to challenge Mark's reign of twelves with his inner game night ninja tactics. Or picture this, Dave finally embracing his inner chaos muppet, joining forces with Jeff in a whirlwind of laughter, flying cards, and yes, even more questionable dice rolls. It's a beautiful, chaotic image, isn't it? It truly is. And you can't help but wonder how April's recent winning streak would have factored into the equation. Would she have joined forces with Mark? creating a powerhouse duo of strategic brilliance? Or would she have taken on the role of a silent observer, analyzing everyone's moves before making her own calculated plays? This is why we need them back for the next deep dive. The people need answers. But speaking of answers, we've been so focused on who was absent from this game night that we haven't really considered. What if that's the point? Oh, okay. What if their absence is, in itself, the biggest clue? Okay, I'll bite. What are you thinking? What if this was all a carefully orchestrated plan? A strategic maneuver designed to throw us off their game? While we're here dissecting the suspiciously lucky roles of those present, Eric, Dave, and April are probably, at this very moment, sipping on some exclusive new brew at Unruly Secret Speakeasy, laughing at our attempts to decipher their grand scheme. Okay, now that's a theory I can get behind. It's like something straight out of a heist movie. While we're focused on the smoke and mirrors, the real masterminds are operating under the radar, planning their next move. Right. Maybe those uh, suspiciously timed national holidays weren't so coincidental after all. Perhaps National Wombat Day is actually code for Operation Distract the Deep Dive Hosts. And here we thought they were just big fans of marsupials and nut-based snacks. It seems we've underestimated their game, listener. But one thing's for sure. This unruly game night has taken an unexpected turn. We went looking for suspicious dice rolls and uncovered a potential conspiracy. This is why we love this deep dive stuff. You never know where the clues will lead, but the journey is always entertaining. Speaking of journeys, let's not forget about Mark and his epic quest for taco dog goodness. Right. We can't leave our listener hanging. Did Mark ever return from his culinary adventure? Was it everything he dreamed of? We need answers, people. Although knowing Mark, he's probably already planning his next strategic taco dog run. Maybe he's even started a spreadsheet, analyzing optimal consumption times for maximum game weight enjoyment. I wouldn't put it past him. And hey, if anyone's earned the right to a little strategic snacking, it's a champion. Speaking of champions, let's not forget about Jeff and his chaotic victory. Whether it was luck, skill, or some uncanny ability to channel the energy of a thousand bouncing dice. The man secured his place in unruly game night history. And who knows, maybe that chaotic energy is contagious. Listener, if you ever find yourself at Unruly Brewing Co. on a Mug Club Tuesday, maybe try a Jeff-inspired move, roll the dice with your eyes closed, draw a card at random, embrace the chaos, and see what happens. Just make sure you're prepared for the consequences, and maybe have a backup plan if those consequences involve accusations of cheating. Solid advice. <laughs>
But seriously, listener, we want to hear from you. Have you ever witnessed a game night descend into utter chaos? Or maybe you have your own theory about Eric, Dave, and April's master plan. Head over to social media handles and let us know what you think. Really went down at Unruly Game Nights, episode five, maybe. Until next time, happy gaming.